Hello, and thank you for joining the session. In this session, I will describe how to manage SaaS application using infrastructure as code and GitOps workflow. I will describe the solution, and I also will do a live demo. So by the end of the session, you'll be able to take some of the principle and implement it on your system. So let's start. My name is Aran Bibi and I'm the co-founder and chief product officer at Firefly. We are a cloud asset management solution for DevOps and cloud engineer, and we are automatically transform cloud into infrastructure as code. Before that, I was the head of DevOps at Aqua Security, and in general, I'm doing DevOps for more than 10 years. I really like to learn new technologies and then explain them to others. So I'm going to describe about two principles. One is GitOps, and the other is using infrastructure as code to manage SaaS applications. So infrastructure as code is most common usage on deploying cloud infrastructure. So we have tools like Terraform, and I'm going to use Terraform in the example in this discussion. And with Terraform, you can basically describe your resources and then using uh, the Terraform binary in order to deploy them into the, the cloud itself. And you are basically enjoying all of the benefits of writing code using a Git flow and um, pull requests, peer reviews. You can embed uh, in your CICD scanning tools and uh, basically doing a shift left for infrastructure provisioning. One of the nice things with Terraform is that there is um, a SaaS extensions, a SaaS providers that you can uh, use Terraform to manage them. So you can see here in this slide, you can uh, using Terraform, you can manage your Akamai, PagerDuty, New Relic, GitHub, uh, uh, Datadog, Cloudflare, and much more. So we basically take it the concept of describing cloud resources and doing it for other kind of resources and configuration that you have on your SaaS tool. In the left hand, we have the GitOps. And GitOps, uh, you are basically uh, having a workflow that once you are provisioning something uh, into the Git, uh, one of the, the branches, it can be main branch, it can be different branch, you have a component that basically reconcile that uh, manifest into the real actual state. And I will explain about it in, in one minute. So first of all, see the number of downloads that we have for SaaS providers uh, for Terraform. So you can see this list on the Terraform registry. You can browse for a provider and you can see whether one of the SaaS tools that you are using have a, a provider. Again, this is an open source. The community is uh, contributing to the provider and there is a, a very nice uh, download rate. For example, Datadog have 32 million down, download rate of provider, meaning there is a lot of teams that managing their Datadog configuration using Terraform. I will also use Datadog in my example in the demo of this session. So in the other end of GitOps, really in a nutshell, GitOps is when you are uh, uh, pushing your manifest into the main branch or different branch, and the GitOps operator basically reconcile it into the Kubernetes workload. So GitOps is the, the main use case of GitOps right now is to provision changes on your Kubernetes workloads. But what we are doing in this discussion is basically taking this concept and the tools and combining them in order to use that reconcile also for SaaS management. So the main tools in the GitOps ecosystem uh, is Argo CD and Flux. Very, uh, very cool open source tools. Uh, Argo have a very nice UI. And those are basically GitOps operator. They are a component that they are listening into your Git repository, looking for changes. And once you are introduced a change, meaning a developer push a change into the Git, they are checking whether it's uh, correlate with the real state of the cluster and basically reconcile 
uh, um, the manifest that you have on Git into the real actual running configuration. So you have like a continuous delivery uh, a workflow, which is fully automatic. The developer just need to push stuff into Git and eventually the real state of the cluster is going to be changed. And if somebody doing a manual change into the cluster in a Kubernetes example, if somebody doing a kub cuddle command and basically edit one of the deployment or one of the other components like uh, our config maps, the GitOps, op the GitOps operator basically will reconcile and overwrite the, the manual change with the source of truth, which is the Git uh, uh, main branch. So I'm going back to the uh, to the demo that I'm going to present. So the traditional way right now uh, for managing uh, Datadog is going through the Datadog UI, which is very easy to use uh, and very nice, I will say. And this is what we call the ClickOps. When you're doing operational task using a UI and dashboard rather than using code. So if a developer or a DevOps or SRE, whoever that is managing the monitoring in uh, the organization would like to introduce new configuration into uh, Datadog, it will basically go into the dashboard and click add monitor. And then the, the, the configuration will be uh, uh, on the system. The, uh, the downside of the ClickOps approach is that you don't have a versioning or changes in the configuration and it's not immutable. You cannot replicate it to different instances. So if you have, for example, uh, a Datadog uh, parent for uh, different kind of regions, like you have the US and the Europe, and you would like to replicate everything and to be consistent, the better way to do it is using infrastructure as code because then you are also tracking the changes, but you also have like the immutability configuration and you have the option to deploy the same kind of manifest many times, even for disaster recovery purposes. So if I'm taking the infrastructure as code management for Datadog and also combine it with GitOps, I will get workflow that is look like this. I have a developer that will push the new monitor, the change that you would like to do in Datadog into the main branch, going through all the CI, CD and uh, pull request kind of flows. But once it merged into the main branch, I have the reconciliation component. In my case, I'm going to use Arco CD, Flux subsystem and TF controller. Those components will work together in order to reconcile the Terraform manifest that I have in my main branch into Datadog. So if someone will do a manual change into Datadog, the Argo CD will automatically override it and align it with the stuff that I have on my Git. In this way, I will be able to enjoy all of the benefits of infrastructure as code for managing SaaS application. So I'm talking about Datadog, but it's applicable to any SaaS that have a Terraform provider. Another example is Grafana Cloud, but it's not like just monitoring system. It can be any other SaaS uh, provider uh, that you are using. Here I put some example. You can use it for managing Okta, Hot Zero, even GitHub itself, and much more. So let's go to the demo. So what I have here is my Datadog dashboard. This is the dashboard of, uh, this is the user interface of Datadog. And even if you are not familiar uh, with it and you are not using and you've never seen before, it's very intuitive. So in, in my example, I would like to add new monitoring, uh, uh, basically adding a new alert uh, uh, to my system. And the traditional way, as I mentioned, is to go to this screen and click new monitor and then go through the very nice UI that I have here, choosing exactly what I would like to do. And once I will complete this wizard, I will have 
um, another line item here that is basically describing uh, the monitor that I just introduced. And uh, that's it. And if I would like to use Terraform to do the same activity, I will go to the Terraform uh, uh, registry site and to the Datadog provider, and I will look for the Datadog monitor manifest. So this is an HCL code. This is a Terraform language uh, syntax that is basically describing uh, how to introduce monitor into Datadog. So I have the name of the resource. This is the type of the resource, Datadog monitor. And I have some fields, the mandatory fields that I need to put. Basically, this is the configuration. So this piece of code is a Terraform configuration that I can use in order to provision new monitor into Datadog. But for uh, this topic, I would like to do it the GitOps way. I would like to have it pushing into my uh, Git repository and the magic will happen and it will automatically go into um, uh, my Datadog uh, configuration. So as I mentioned, I'm going to use Argo CD. I'm not going to cover uh, the installation of Argo CD in this session, but it's very easy. In this case, I just pin up a, a kind cluster, which is a Kubernetes uh, cluster that I'm running locally in uh, my computer. And I just use uh, the Argo Elm uh, uh, chart to deploy it. And within a uh, few minutes, I have this local uh, uh, Argo CD instance ready for me. I use a version with FSA, which is Flux subsystem for Argo. This will allow me to uh, deploy the TF controller. Basically this component called TF controller it, this is uh, the component that reconciling Terraform configuration. So in order to use Argo and provision Terraform uh, manifest uh, in GitOps, you need to have this uh, FSA uh, embedded in your Argo CD. It's very easy to, uh, to get it there. And you also need to have the TF controller. And I'm now going to deploy the TF controller uh, um, in this demo. So let's do a new application. I will call it TF controller. Default project. Again, everything here is local. I guess for uh, the production level, uh, you need to have additional configuration, but just for the demo, I'm going to use the default stuff. So I'm going to ask him to use the Flux subsystem. This is uh, for the TF controller to work. And auto create Flux resources and auto create namespaces. This is uh, in case I don't have any namespace, uh, 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 it will automatically create it for me. And apply out of six sync only and the repository. Basically, I'm going to use the Elm chart. Um, so TF controller is an open source product maintained by WeWork. So this is the address. I'm going to use an Elm chart. The name of the Elm chart, of course, is TF controller. Very nice. And Let's see here, I have a space. Okay, give controller. And I'm going to use the latest version, the 0 0.5. Destination, it's my local cluster. And I'm going to deploy it on the namespace that it's already uh, created by the FSA, which called Flux system. So again, this is a, an infrastructure component. It's not the application itself that I'm going to use in order to sync the data dog but I just want to demonstrate how easy it is to put a TF controller. It's took a few seconds. I'm doing create and I don't have permission. Sorry for that. Let me quickly log into the system uh, using uh, the uh, my credential. So I have it runs, I put administrator uh, permission. I have the TF controller in place. So I would like to click 
sync and basically deploy uh, the Helm. It will take a few seconds and you can see here, this is all the components of the TF controller. Um, and this will basically help uh, my application to be reconciled um, uh, using Terraform inside Argo City. So very nice. What I'm going to do next is going to deploy the application that will sync my data log configuration. So I will call it data dog con sync default project use flux auto create namespace apply out of sync and automatically uh, create flux resources. This is the mandatory fields that I need uh, for that. And I'm going to put my repository um, that I'm going to use in this demo. And of course, I will share all of the links uh, uh, of this presentation. So let's go to my GitHub. Okay. So let's copy this one. Very nice. So let's see. the main branch. And in this case, I would like uh, to mention the infra uh, uh, configuration. Uh, this is like a subdirectory I have. Let's have a quick look on how I have uh, the configuration in my repository. So I have two folders, the infra. This is basically uh, describing uh, the reconciliation, like what is the Git repository that I would like to uh, reconcile and what kind of, uh, whether I would like only to uh, do a dry run or I would like to apply the configuration. And of course, what is the path into the Terraform configuration that I would like to reconcile. So this is a, a Flux configuration. This is inside the infra subdirectory and the code for the new monitor is uh, basically inside the Terraform uh, uh, directory. So I have three files. This is uh, a typical structure for Terraform. I have the main. In my main, I have the, the configuration that I would like to introduce. This is a data log monitor. The same, I just copy paste the example that we have on the Terraform uh, provider uh, uh, documentation. I put here uh, AAA. This monitor was created using GitOps. The reason I put a triple A is just to, to have uh, it's the first in the line of the monitor uh, uh, because it's sorted uh, alphabetically. And I have the provider, uh, which is describing the provider that I'm going to use and the credential I'm going to use in order uh, uh, to integrate with uh, Datadog using Terraform and the variables which is uh, I'm using for uh, the, the API key and the, uh, and the application key for Datadog. Again, this is our secret that I'm storing in Kubernetes and um, highly recommend to use that in any kind of sensitive data. So this is a structure. It's a, a very simple one describing the reconciliation, one describing the code itself of the monitoring. And I'm going back to my Argo screen So I will ask Argo basically uh, to listen to the infra uh, uh, path where I have the flux configuration uh, uh, in place. And the destination is my local cluster and I will put it on a namespace, a new namespace, I will call it dev. So let's see if everything is all right. This is the application name, data config sync. Manual, everything here is there. This is my repository. It's basically going to listen to this repository. And okay, 
seems okay. Let's create it. Very nice. So what I'm going to do here is just click sync in order to everything to be in synchronized. And we will wait a few seconds to see if everything goes well. Okay, I just click refresh. I have my repository and then the repository pickup that I need to uh, deploy something using Terraform. So I have these uh, components as well. I have service account, Terraform. This is like the Terraform controller uh, kind of object. And let's wait a few more seconds and I will able to see the new monitor introduce into uh, my monitoring uh, state here. Let's just refresh it. Okay, not yet. It might take a few seconds. Let's go back into Argo CD and see if everything is okay here. Okay, now I see here that everything is in sync. Let's go back, refresh. Oh. Let me see. Great. So as you can see, now I have uh, the triple A, this monitor was created using GitOps. Uh, that is now appearing in the uh, data log dashboard. This was created by Terraform using uh, the GitOps workflow. So what I'm going to do right now is because uh, the default setting was manually sync, meaning that uh, the operator need to go to Argo CD UI and click on uh, synchronize in order to get the changes. I would like to have it uh, like fully automated. So what I'm going to do is going to the details and then click enable automatically synchronize. And the meaning of this is once I will push change into the master or the main branch, Argo will automatically introduce the change. So once it's done, what I'm going to do is to create uh, a new monitoring. So I'm going to my Terraform configuration. This is the monitoring that is all, already deployed. I'm going to replicate it. I will give it uh, a different kind of name. And I put here a AAA and let's just give it a different name. Uh, OSS, Latin America is awesome. And just for the sake of the change, let's change here team, open source, and I don't know, demo. I will keep the rest of configuration the same because this is just uh, for demonstration. So what I will expect is once I will approve this change in my Git workflow, it will automatically appear in my Datadog dashboard. So let's see if it's working. This is my terminal, Git status. I see that I modify uh, uh, the main DF file. That's Edit, commit, new monitoring for Datadog. Assuming it's a private branch, I will have to have a pull request and uh, somebody to approve it. And of course the CICD, but right now I'm going to skip that part and just push directly to the change to the main branch, which is of course not recommended but just uh, to make things uh, more short, I will hit push and put this change directly into the main 
uh, branch of my uh, repository. And now what I'm expecting is that Argo CD will identify uh, there is a new commit and will reconcile the change using the Terraform controller into Datadog. So just click, let's go directly into Datadog and maybe wait a few seconds to see uh, whether I have a second monitoring in place uh, with the new name and the new tag. So I guess it will take a few more seconds for Argo to pick up the change. Maybe you'll just click refresh here to see whether there is uh, uh, the new uh, commit ID. Not yet. Let's go here. Everything is in sync. Everything seems normal. Let's wait a few more seconds. Amazing. Now I see I have uh, the new monitoring that I just introduced. Only by pushing the code into master, I change the configuration. This is the team open source, the other tag demo. And again, this is the same kind of monitoring, just a different kind of name and tags, but I think you got a point. Uh, so let's try to conclude what we did here. I have a developer pushing into the branch here. I have a CI CD pipeline um, and peer review and other kind of gates that I need to make sure that everything is going to the main branch is basically production ready and qualified uh, using uh, manual and automatic tests, of course. And once it's in main branch, I have this uh, technology stack uh, contain a Kubernetes cluster, Argo CD, Flux subsystem, and Terraform controller, basically reconciling uh, uh, my Terraform configuration that is managing SAS and, and applying changes uh, into uh, the system. And it's taking something like two minutes from the time where a developer pushed to the uh, main branch until a runtime configuration is ready. So I have here all of the material, uh, like uh, the stuff that I used for the demo. And um, that's it. I hope you're enjoying uh, uh, this uh, uh, session. You can reach me out uh, via LinkedIn, email, Twitter, and uh, feel free to ask any questions. And of course, I highly recommend to check out Firefly. We have a free tier and uh, take care and thank you very much.